Hello, this is Greg with HVAC Solutions, and I'd like to welcome you to our webinar on Honeywell Generators. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in, and uh, I'll try to answer them throughout the webinar, or if I can't get to them, I'll answer them for sure after the webinar. So when we talk about Honeywell generators, this is a generator that is made by Generac. So why did they choose to go with a Honeywell branded generator? Well, it comes down to that last bullet point at the bottom, 92% consumer awareness. Uh, it's very difficult to go into a home where people have not heard the name Honeywell. Honeywell also resonates very well within the HVAC community. When we start looking at where people know Honeywell from, uh, I would say HVAC guys know it as thermostats, maybe zone control, but consumers see Honeywell in potentially every room in their house. Um, they're known for security systems. They're known for a lot of portable devices, um, filters, not to mention that thermostat on the wall. If we look briefly at who buys generators, uh, you can see that the majority of people who buy are between 45 years of age and 65 years of age. That's the, the lion's share of it. So the target market is not you know, the 20 year old who's buying their first house. When we look at income levels, uh, this is one that was, a, I'll call it a shocker to me. I felt that people who bought generators were making more money than the average, um, you know, in that $200,000, $250,000 a year. But the reality is the majority of people buying generators are, are in that $50,000 a year to $100,000 a year category. I'd say the only, um, I'll say downside or, or the skew to this is that there's a lot more people making $50,000 to $100,000 a year versus $200,000 a year. Some other things to consider. Um, we're seeing a lot more power outages, uh, and that's because the electrical grid is getting older, and it's not able to keep up with the demands. Um, and when I talked about uh, people in that 45 years of age to 65 year, years of age who are buying generators, we're seeing that a good chunk of the population is starting to be 50 and older. So there's more people getting older. So there's more people who are able to buy generators. Uh, the chart on the right, basically the orange line shows central air conditioning and units installed. You can see that uh, back in 45 it just started and then it kind of just took off from there, you know, growing basically every year. If you go all the way to the right, in the light blue line is where generators are at. So this is a product that's still in its infancy. So if you equate that to an HVAC or a air conditioning system, there's a lot of uh, potential there. Potential that we don't see with a lot of other products because the majority of people do not already have one. If we look at power outages on a national scale, um, you can see an awful lot of red on this map. And the red basically means that there's a million plus people without power at some point during the year. Um, I'd say the East Coast has an awful lot of it for obvious reasons. But if you look at Chicago, um, our neck of the woods, there, there's an awful lot of red there as well. If I was to drill down a little bit and you look at that Chicago area, um, 2011, 
over 350 power outages. And there's almost 2 million people that were without power. So it's really a, a huge opportunity. If I talk a little bit about who installs generators, I think most people would think of electricians. And while it's true, there's still an awful lot more electricians who put in generators than the HVAC. But what's interesting to note is that the number of HVAC contractors that are installing generators continues to grow. And it grows a lot more than the electricians. Uh, this past year, um, Honeywell spent a lot of money figuring out who buys generators. And it basically came down to two groups, what they call winners and what they call worriers. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but if you look, they whether they're considered a winner or a worrier, they are buying generators for the same reasons. You know, they're worried about security. They're worried about their family those types of things. So if you look at this list here, who buys or who needs standby generators, it's pretty much anybody could use one. But what I'm really trying to point out is that homeowners buy generators for different reasons than business owners. Homeowners don't want their basement to flood. They don't want to lose the food in the refrigerator. You know, they want to be able to take a shower, those kind of things. Uh, when you're looking at, at businesses, it basically comes down to one thing. They want to be able to ring that cash register when there's no power. They want to keep the momentum going. Um, and this is, I'll say, especially true for businesses that, um, I'll say, may have food-related items. There's a definite benefit to being the only guy on the block who's able to sell a sandwich. If I start looking at um, the product mix, that little guy in the middle is what we call an inverter. This is a small, you can call it handheld um, generator, but this thing's good for running a blender. So it's really good for like tailgating, that kind of thing. Um, the top right is what we call a portable. I like to call it the two-wheel dolly type of generator. Um, this one's great for running a refrigerator, um, maybe a furnace. Uh, it's good for new construction when you need to run some power. At the bottom there, that is what we call the home standby. And that's uh, what we're going to be focusing on. Honeywell standby generators come in three basic sizes for the air-cooled, um, 10, 15, and 20 kW. Uh, this makes it really simple or, or a lot easier to size because we're, we're not going up every 2 kW like some other guys. You know, we don't have a 7, an 8, a 10, a 12, a 14. We're pretty much stuck at 10, 15, and 20, and we can usually put a house into one of those sizes. Um, here at TEC, we stock all three sizes of air cools, and then as we move into the liquid cooled, we stock the 25 and 45 kW units. So I started off saying that this is a Generac made machine that's labeled Honeywell. So what makes it different? It basically comes down to this, these six different features, uh, load shedding, the warranty, the monitor, the base fascia, the aluminum cabinet, and the GFCI outlet. And we're going to talk about each one of those individually, but that will give you a quick summary of what makes this unit different than the Generac models out there. This is the circuit board for the Honeywell generators. It is mounted on the outdoor unit. And this is what I call the brains of the generator. And I bring this up because um, sometimes I'll get guys who want to take an older generator and make it a newer generator. 
and while it is possible it's uh, extremely difficult because the uh, the wires don't line up exactly right and it's uh, it's tough to make everything work properly though it is possible Here's our transfer switches, and we stock a 100, a 200, and a 400 amp service rated transfer switch. All of these transfer switch are NEMA 3 rated, so they can be mounted outdoors. And they all have load managing within them. Uh, sometimes I get asked, what is service rated means? Basically, what service rated means is that you can mount this transfer switch before the customer circuit breaker box because it has its own designated um, circuit breaker inside of the transfer switch. A non-service rated transfer switch would not have that circuit breaker and it would go after the customer circuit breaker panel. So here is my grade school drawing of what I like to call the old way of doing generators. You would go from the meter to the customer's circuit breaker panel and then you would give them power to could be 16 circuits, it could be 12 circuits, maybe 10. Uh, and when the power goes off, those are the 16 circuits they get. You know, call it the basics. The new way, or the Honeywell way of doing generators is we go from the meter through the transfer switch and then we back up the entire customer's circuit breaker panel. So if I was to ask you what is difficult about this installation, uh, you're not standing in front of me, so I'll, I'll answer for you. But what happens is if I ask you to turn off power in this situation, you would physically have to pull the meter because there's no switch to turn it off. So the first thing is you have to pull the meter. And not everybody is uh, capable or willing to do that. Now, if I go back to this way and I was to ask you to turn off power, all you would have to do is slip the circuit breaker. So in that sense, it's easier. The other thing that's easier is that it comes pre-wired. You get two whips, uh, one that goes to the generator and then one that goes to the circuit breaker box. Now, if I was to ask you what is difficult about this installation, um, I would say the first thing is you have to figure out which 16 circuits the homeowner wants, or 12 circuits, whatever it is. The other thing is um, for each circuit that you hook up, you've got two wires. So if you've got a 16 circuit switch, you've got 32 wires going to the customer circuit breaker box. In the new way, we're not dealing with individual circuits. So while you're dealing with a lot less wires, they are bigger wires. So we're dealing with whole house power. So this is the load shedding switch um, and this circuit board is inside of the transfer switch. This is one thing that I, I really want to focus on. Um, the first thing that you see is that you've got AC1 and AC2 on the left of the circuit board. And those are 24 volt circuits designed to shed the air conditioners or air conditioner if you only had one. Um, so if I was to go through a sequence of events, the power goes off, the generator kicks on, we send power through the transfer switch, and we back up the customer's circuit breaker panel. Now when I say we back up the customer's circuit breaker panel, what we're really doing is giving the 115 volt circuits in a house power first. So if I was to ask you, what are 115 volt circuits in a house? Outlets come to mind, um, refrigerator comes to mind, uh, TV, sump pump, garage door, basic lights. 
So the first thing that happens is you get all the necessities. You get all the 115 volt circuits in a house. Then it goes to this uh, circuit board inside of the transfer switch and it looks at AC1 and it says, does that generator have enough power to turn on AC1? It does, so it kicks it on. Then it goes over to L1. Now the difference between L1 and AC1 is that AC1 is a 24 volt circuit. All we're doing is cutting the Y wire or breaking the Y wire so that we're allowing the thermostat to make a call. At L1, we are dealing with what I'm going to call 120 volt contacts. So you need this DLM module, which is basically a 50 amp contactor, to turn on or shut off large 240 volt loads in a house. What is a large 240 volt load? Well, it could be an electric hot water heater. It could be a well pump. Uh, it could be an electric dryer, maybe a range. So those are the types of things that we're looking to possibly shed. So if I was to start over, we lose power. Generator kicks on. We send power through the transfer switch. Circuit breaker box gets power, which is the 115 volts, the necessities. Then we look at AC1, and we turn on the air conditioner. Then we look at L1, and we're turning on the electric hot water heater. Then it's going to go to AC2. Let's just say that AC2 is not calling for cooling. So it bypasses that and goes to L2, which could be a um, well pump, we'll say. And it'll kick that on. Then it's going to go to L3, and maybe that's a range. And then at that point, maybe the generator says, you know, I just don't have enough power to turn on that range. So it's going to drop everything on the circuit board. And it's going to start over. There's a little time delay in there, so we're not messing up anything. Then it would do the same thing. 115 volts still has power at the customer circuit breaker box. Then we're looking at AC1, turning on the air conditioner. L1, we're turning on that hot water heater. AC2 is still off. L2, we're kicking on that um, well pump. Get down to L3, still can't turn on that range. So it's going to just drop off that. So essentially what happens is, first thing that happens, you get the 115s. You always have the 115s. Then it looks at the circuit board, and based on frequency, it either allows things to come on or it turns them off. Now I get um, asked a lot of questions like, um, you've got the well pump on L2. Well, this homeowner is buying a generator. They don't want to ever shed the well pump. They always want water. They want to be able to take you know, a hot shower, whatever it is. I said, that's great. That makes sense. So in that case, we wouldn't shed the well pump, even though it's a 240 volt load. So we would leave that on the 115 volt um, panel or the, the customer circuit breaker panel without shedding it. The penalty is your generator has to be sized properly, meaning it has to be big enough to handle everything that's on that circuit breaker panel, everything you're not shedding. If you shed it, you can take that off of the sizing. If you don't shed it, the generator has to be big enough to handle it. Um, what if they say, you know, I really like my air conditioner, but I don't like it quite as much as I like my hot water heater. So not a problem. We'll put the hot water heater on L1, and then we'll move the air conditioner to AC2. So in that circumstance, we would turn on the electric hot water heater first, and then we would go to AC2. So the point is, is that you can set your priorities, or you can leave it on the customer circuit breaker panel, but the generator has to be big enough to handle the load. This is a picture of the DLM module. Basically, this is just a 50 amp contactor in a NEMA 3 box. So 
It is an expensive little contactor, but it can be mounted outside if you absolutely needed it. This is a quick sizing guide. Now, this isn't really meant for the sales guy who's out there that's going to, you know, do a um, a walk through and look at what they need, look at what they don't need. This is more for a service technician who says, uh, who's on a service call. Homeowner says, you know, I, I understand you sell generators. The guy can say, yeah. Um, based on the size of your house, you're probably looking at a 15 kW. So how this breaks down, a 10 kW will start a 3 ton air conditioner. A 15 kW will start a 4 ton air conditioner. And a 20 kW will start a 5 ton air conditioner. Um, there's a 2 after where it says 5 ton air conditioner, 4 ton air conditioner. All that's saying is that you can hook up two of those air conditioners, but you're never going to really start two of them, at least not at the same time. Um, so if you're looking at a 15 kW and they have two 4 ton air conditioners, just know you're going to be able to start one of them, not both of them. I put this uh, sizing guide up here because uh, sometimes homeowners will say, well, I talked to Generac and they said I only need an 8kW generator. Say, well, this sizing tool is more for homeowners, you know, how many refrigerators do you have, do you have ceiling fans, do you have this, do you have that? And you're going to go there and say, well, you really need a 15kW because you have a 4 ton air conditioner. Just know that it's out there and that people will tell you that Generac said, and it's not always the case. If you run into a um, large hotel or a animal hospital or, or something um, that's more industrial, we can help you out and we have software to um, look at those types of jobs. As far as accessories go, um, we do offer a full array of maintenance kits, um, some with oil, some without. Uh, cold weather kits are basically for where it is consistently really cold. Now, we do sell some of these here in the Midwest. Um, they sell a lot more of them as you get into Canada. Um, for the most part, I don't recommend cold weather kits unless you absolutely need them. Uh, turns out they're pretty expensive. They're not the easiest thing to install, and so it makes the price of that quote to the homeowner go up considerably. This is the Honeywell Generator website. It's HoneywellGenerators.com, um, and there's two things I want to point out. Um, the first thing is the Service and Support tab. Now, this is nice because you can go on there, type in a model number, and you will be able to um, get installation data, um, literature, all type of diagrams that you would need for that model. So if you're doing something at midnight, you can get it if you need to. The other thing it has is a dealer locator. So if a homeowner is on the website, they are able to find Honeywell Generator dealers. So what is a dealer? In Honeywell's world, they have two different types of dealers. The first one is a sales dealer. So this is a guy who can buy a generator, they can put in a generator, but that's about it. The sales in service dealer means you can buy a generator, you can sell a generator, and then you can also perform warranty work on those generators. And service dealers get priority listing on the website. To become a sales dealer is actually uh, pretty easy. Um, you buy a generator, you fill out the form, and then you commit to watching a few uh, sales training online videos. To be a service dealer is a little bit more um, intensive. You have to complete the two-day air-cooled class. 
which is uh, it's five hundred dollars per person. You have to buy a parts kit, which is normally eight hundred and twenty-five dollars. Um, we've actually got those uh, on a promotion right now where you can pick up the parts kit for um, four hundred dollars. And then you have to fill out the paperwork, and that would allow you to do warranty work for not only Honeywell generators, but Generac generators um, or any other products that they make. It would be um, Siemens, Eaton, Watchdog. There's a few others. I always like to talk about selling the install. Um, the number one issue that uh, Honeywell gets is that the gas line is too small. So in a professional installation, it's nice to let the homeowner know that this thing is going to work after you put it in. The other problem we run into is that the meter is not big enough to handle the generator. So uh, a good majority of the time you have to actually upsize the meter to make sure it will handle all the gas appliances in the house, including the generator. Other things to remember with the install is that these units do not come with batteries. Um, the battery is a 26R. It's almost like a, um, a deep cycle marine type battery. Um, <laughs> control wires. Uh, I always talk about control wires because in this case, uh, control wires would mean something like 14 gauge. In the HVAC world, sometimes that means uh, thermostat wire. And you cannot install a generator with thermostat wire. It just will not work. Um, the other thing is service and maintenance. There's a lot of people that will install generators, but they will not go out to maintenance it or to service the unit. And um, I always bring up the transfer switch sizing because we size transfer switches for the power delivered to the house. So if you have a 200 amp service to the house, you're going to go with a 200 amp transfer switch. Um, and then I would ask you, what happens if you sell a 100 amp transfer switch and they have 200 amp coming to the house? Well, it may work, but you just cut down the amps rating to the house. You took it from 200 down to 100. I've actually seen those work, but it blows my mind. I like to uh, talk about standbys and portables because um, a lot of people have portables, a whole lot more than have standbys. Um, and it turns out that if somebody buys a portable unit, they are much more likely to buy a standby. Half of the people who buy a portable unit will eventually buy a standby unit. Um, and that's because they get tired of dealing with the gas. They get tired of starting that thing or rushing home to start it. They have to run the cords. And a lot of people run these things in garages and they get worried about carbon monoxide. So there's a lot of reasons for people to upgrade from a portable to a standby. One um, other area that we've had success with is with guys who install backup sump pumps. First of all, people are already worried about you know a flooding basement. Um, so if you're able to say, well, you're going to spend X amount anyway on a backup sump pump, you know why not install a generator? We'll get power to this thing, um, and you also get your lights, your freezer, your heating, all the other things that come with it. Some of the specs on the unit. Um, we talk about decibels, but really it sounds like a riding lawnmower. So they're never the quietest thing. Um, the nice thing is that when it exercises once a week, it runs at 40% capacity. So it's not you know full blown. And then you can set that time and date so it comes on um, you know not uh, six six o'clock on Sunday morning or something. As we get into some of the features, um, all of the Honeywell air-cooled units come with the remote control. What's nice about the remote is that it will tell the homeowner what's going on with the unit, you know, when it last exercised, if there's an issue, um, you know, 
low battery life, whatever it is. But the beauty is then they can call the contractor and say, my generator has an issue. If they don't have this, when are they finding out? Hopefully they're finding out when it does an exercise. But usually they're finding out when there's a power outage and the unit's not working. Base fascia. This isn't really a huge deal, but if you look at the, the unit in front, it has that base fascia at the bottom. So I call it a little skirt that kind of finishes off the unit, but really what it does, it covers up the forklift holes and it keeps the critters out. All of the Honeywell units are aluminum or have an aluminum cabinet. Um, these units are designed to last a long time and the aluminum doesn't rust. And it's a little bit lighter. So if you're the guy carrying these things from the truck to the backyard, a little bit lighter than steel. The warranty. Honeywell units have a five years parts, two years labor. Most of the Generac units are going to have a three years parts, two years labor. And the units have a GFCI outlet. So what this allows you to do is what I call help a neighbor out. You can um, you know, have them run an extension cord so they can at least save their fridge and maybe give them a light or something. Um, but it really helps with that noise situation if you're close to a neighbor and they're having issues with that unit being too loud. So, well, yeah, it's loud, but when you need power, go ahead and plug into it. Um, we've also used it for like a sump pump if there was an issue, that kind of thing. Um, some of the smaller Generac units will not have an outlet, and some of the other manufacturers will give you an outlet in the box, but it won't be installed, so you'll have to install it. Um, and then not all of them are GFCI rated, which is strange to me because when are you trying to plug stuff into this thing? Yeah, usually when it's storming out and, um, or maybe snowing out. Lastly, we do the load shed, which gives the homeowner the whole house. Um, to do this with the Generac, it's an expensive upgrade. With us, it's pretty much just standard. So how this compares. Uh, on a 10KW, you're going to pay in the neighborhood of $250 more for a Honeywell than you would for a Generac. And if we put them side by side, 10KW Generac, 10KW Honeywell. The Generac is going to come with the easy circuit switch, which could either be 12 or 16 circuits. With Honeywell, you're getting the load shed doing the entire house. Their unit is going to be steel. Ours would be aluminum. If they're getting a three-year parts warranty, we're getting five years. Theirs will not come with a monitor. Ours comes with the monitor. Ours has a GFCI outlet, and it also comes with the fascia. So really the question is, you know, will those features transfer across the kitchen table when it costs you $250 more for the machine? They talk about parts. We have a uh, ton of parts, not only for the Honeywell units, but also for Generac units, um, and we're able to take care of some of the warranty issues that may come up. I want to give you a little preview of what Honeywell is doing. Um, I'll call it mid mid year, maybe late second quarter. Um, so mind you, this stuff is not out yet. It's not available, um, but it is coming shortly. They, uh, they have 85 product improvements. Uh, we surely do not have time to talk about all of them. And honestly, some of them are uh, pretty mundane, you know, like a, a heavier grommet. <laughs> so one of the first thing is they made the battery compartment bigger. So if you've ever uh, had to use a sledgehammer to get the battery in there, it made it a little bit bigger so that you can fit batteries, actually batteries in there, which is nice. One of the uh, features we don't talk about with um, – the Honeywell generators is that you can have this thing 18 inches away from a wall. Most of the competitors out there 
have to go five feet away from the wall. So you're almost putting it like, I want to say the middle of the yard, but it's way out there. Um, and we've gotten, uh, I'll say called out a little bit on that, on how we can be 18 inches while others are five feet away. So what they started doing is putting the test and the NFPA requirements on the outside of each unit. So anytime an inspector brings it up, it's right there for them so that they can see, yes, you can be 18 inches away instead of five feet. They have a, uh, a lot of engine improvements, um, but the one I wanted to talk about was that they have balanced out the quiet test for a smoother operation. Every once in a while, I'd run into a unit that, I call it, ran rough in the, in the, in the test mode. Um, and they had to do with it not being you know, balanced out properly. So they fixed some of those issues. They've made the uh, fuel conversion a little bit easier. You know, I don't think it was tough before, but they made it a lot easier where you don't even have to take much off. You just flip a switch and you can go from natural gas to LP in a matter of seconds. Here's a picture of the new sink uh, circuit board. So this is in the outdoor unit. Um, it's got a, it's a more LED lights and more um, of a touch screen. And I'm not going to go through you know, how this controller stacks up to the old one. But as you can see here, the, everything in red is new. So a lot more codes, a lot more alarms, a lot more display options coming out with the new controller. There's also a new um, transfer switch. They've come out with a 300 amp switch. I, um, I don't know how much we'll run into that here. I, I think I've seen it once and it, um, it was a strange situation. Inside of the transfer switch, the um, circuit board there, they have taken this from 120 volts down to 24 volts. So now you're able to use control wires on both sides of that circuit board. So it should make the, um, the installation a lot easier in the future. They have um, also introduced mobile link. And this is where now your homeowner can get alerts and text telling them what is going on with the generator. So what is it? It's a cellular-based remote um, solution on the back of the generator that can communicate with a website or an app to tell the homeowner what's going on. So when they go onto the website, this one says Generac, but we also have it for Honeywell. Uh, this can tell them where the battery's at, the frequency they're at, um, the voltage. They can see a lot of information, um, and it will also alert them when there's an issue. So as I go through this, um, the nice thing is it can not only alert just the homeowner, it can also alert the installing contractor, basically tying you to that unit. So you'll know that uh, the unit is um, on a, running on low voltage. So you know to maybe grab a battery and shoot out there, that kind of thing. Or maybe the homeowner is uh, away on business. So you got an email, you can talk to them and see if they want you to stop by over there. The other big improvement really um, has nothing to do with product. It's just an additional warranty. So they're bumping the whole thing up to five years. So that's five-year parts, five years labor, and all Honeywell units. Real quick, I just want to talk about some upcoming classes. We have the two-day air-cooled class. Um, we actually had one that just finished last week. We've got another one coming in the fall. And we're also, for the first time, bringing the liquid-cooled, the commercial generator service training to Melrose Park. 
We also have a bunch of um, sales classes coming out. Uh, these are sales, sizing, and installation classes um, in South Bend, Rockford, Melrose, and Lansing. And that's all I've got. So if you have any questions, I'll stay on the line for just another minute or two. Um, or you could always email me if something comes up. Thank you so much for your